What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another Pioneer video. And while this video should have went out probably a week sooner, given the place that this deck came from and the person playing the deck, uh, my schedule didn't really permit, so I'm going to make it up to you by doing it this week and almost feeling like it's going to be creativity week just from the other modern stuff that's coming. But, you know, with all that being said, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Is It Creativity, specifically the list piloted by Reed Duke, that eventually went on to win Pro Tour Phyrexia. That happened about a few weeks ago. Uh, of course, before we get too deep into it and going over the deck, etc., so on and so forth, if you enjoy my content and you want to see more, of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know or you're notified when I post videos. And if you travel to the description of this video, you will find two links. One of them goes to the Discord server. Uh, I'm going to try to post a lot more in the Discord server, just like general magic stuff and that so if that's stuff that interests you talk about magic modern pioneer format or really any format uh i'm willing to listen and talk about just about anything so uh, if that's something that you follow that link in the description join the discord server and uh, there's also a link to my twitch channel i sometimes stream on twitch i'm trying to do it more often now uh, especially like on weekends and stuff so if you want to be notified when i go live go ahead and follow the link in the description and follow me on twitch with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look. Is it creativity uh, for the Pioneer format? Uh, again, this list it was piloted by Reed Duke. He ended up winning the whole event. Uh, and really, there was actually a person that I played against on Moto a while ago that was playing a creativity deck that essentially was doing this. It was like putting a World Spider Worm into play, putting Xenagos into play, etc. Like, obviously not totally refined, but uh, the fact that like this deck just kind of showed up and it obviously made a huge splash it, it won the whole event so for those not familiar uh, if you're not seeing any of the other videos and stuff that i plan on posting this week or already posted this week uh indomitable creativity is this card that says that you destroy x target artifacts or creatures and each permanent destroyed this way its controller reveals cards from the top of his or her library until an artifact or a creature card is revealed and exiles that card those players put the exile cards onto the battlefield and then shuffle their libraries. So essentially, creativity is going to destroy your own things and then put other things into play. Now, you only have two hits in this deck. It's World Spine Worm and Xenagos. Um, the combo being that like you do it for X2, you put both of them into play. World Spine Worm is a 15-15 with Trample. Xenagos is going to give it uh, plus X plus X and haste until end of turn where x is the creature's power so essentially xenagos is going to make world spine worm a 30 30 haste trampler and it's very hard for your opponent to actually deal with it you know and if they do end up actually getting rid of it uh it's going to make three five fives with trample and then when it's put into the graveyard from anywhere you its owner shuffles it into their library which essentially means that like you could spin creativity again to then put the world spine worm into play to then let the Xenagos uh, throw it at your opponent while once again. So even in some of those scenarios where like you deal with the Word Spine Worm, uh, you still have to deal with like the Xenagos like getting to have the potential to give the World Spine Worm haste again and deal with another 30-30 Trampler. So uh, how is it exactly is it doing it? Uh, in modern, it's pretty straightforward. Like there's a few interactive spells. It gets played a whole different package. This is just going all in on indomitable creativity and using this card specifically to put these into play. So uh, starting off with some of the one drop spells, you have fiery impulse and uh, spike field hazard. Uh, these just being the like damage based removal spike field hazard, uh, having the upside of being able to be played as a land. Uh, and getting to deal one damage uh, could be relevant to some of the other smaller creatures like in the mono white deck getting rid of uh, just exiling them as well uh, just a slight bit of upside in it uh, fiery impulse being the bigger one because it just deals two damage really good in like the first few turns of the game and then upgrades to three damage which again you know is very good against a lot of the other threats that you'll find from some of the other decks in the format uh, you have uh, secrets to the secrets of the key which allows you to investigate if it was uh, cast from your graveyard, you investigate twice. Instant speed, so this essentially gives you a target for creativity. 
also gives you some you know, flashback for four mana. Uh, if you're like digging for creativity or anything like that, you can obviously sacrifice the clue tokens you make because that's the kind of token that you make when you investigate. Um, one spell pierce. I'd imagine that this would be for some of the mirrors, like kind of the same reason why you play spell pierce in like the modern version. You know, you're able to uh, have a decent amount of mana left up. You're able to like creativity and leave up a spell pierce, you know, especially if your opponent taps low. Also pretty good in the early turns to just kind of like disrupt what they're doing. Maybe stop like a fable, the mirror breaker and so on. Or like even in the mirrors, like just stop them from resolving like a big score on turn four. Uh, going to two drops, you have Fire Prophecy, which is a card that we got from Ikoria. It deals three damage to a target creature. And then you put a card from your hand and bottom in your library if you do draw a card. So this does two things. Um, and it specifically have to do with putting a card in the bottom of your library. If you draw a Xenagos or a World Spine Worm, uh, it's pretty catastrophic in the fact that obviously then you cannot creativity to put it into play. Um, you have treasure tokens and stuff, so like you could reasonably cast like the Xenagos if you draw it, you know, with the help of some uh, treasure tokens. Uh, but you still need to cast like pay four mana to get the World Spine Worm into play. Uh, through the Indomitable Creativity, and then 5 mana for, like, the Xenagos. And while, like, you have, like, the big scores and stuff like that to kind of get you there, uh, it is definitely not ideal when, you know, why would you spend 9 mana when you could spend 5 mana? So, Fire Prophecy, getting to put one of these two cards back on, on the bottom of your library so that they can be hit by Indomitable Creativity is very good, and, like, just being a 4 of in this deck as well, super good. Obviously, on top of that, uh, just getting rid of like a dead card, like flooding on land, just put a land to the bottom, draw a fresh card. Uh, maybe you have a spell that's not like necessarily relevant, same thing, put it to the bottom, draw a card. It's just a neat card, and then getting instant speed, deal three damage, you know, is always is always nice, and just something that you can do and easily leave up on turn two, especially alongside Impulse. Impulse is a very old card, I believe it was Tempest when it was first printed, and we're getting in standard, and this card, I believe standard, is it's legal in. Uh, but you look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. It's essentially like Anticipate, but you get to look at another card. And obviously Anticipate was a card that has always shown up in Standard. And like in 2015, 2016, imp or, uh, Anticipate was a very like playable card. Like it was a very playable Standard card. Impulse obviously is just one card deeper. And, you know, making a big splash in Pioneer as a very good like card selection spell definitely giving a lot of options uh at instant speed is really nice and for this deck when you're looking for very specific cards you know like indomitable creativity getting to see the most amount of cards for the least amount of mana is huge and impulse definitely does that uh, make disappear you know this uh counter spell that you know, just counter target spell unless you're, uh, unless it's controller pays two, and then sacrificing a one power creature to then, you know, essentially make them pay four for a certain thing. Um, I'm honestly, like, you have, like, Fable the Mirror Breaker, like, but you really don't want to sacrifice the Goblin Token because it makes treasures, and it's something that you can target with Indomitable Creativity. Um, I can imagine that, like, playing, like, Soken Zins and getting to just, like, a pretty aggressively just like make two one ones with this um to like make uh make disappear you know even better uh i also just imagine this card is pretty good on its own just making your opponent pay two for something and you know tapping them low so then like when you creativity they can't really interact with it uh, you have Valakut Awakening, which well, you put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library and then draw that many plus one. So just on its face, it essentially cycle for three mana. has the benefit of being a land if you need it. But, you know, again, going back to like Fire Prophecy, where you can, if you draw uh, Xenagos or World Spine Worm, you're able to just put it to the bottom. Also just getting rid of a bunch of lands if you end up flooding out or, you know, you're looking for just like a few pieces you can trade in, like maybe some of your not relevant interaction to then hopefully draw into like an indomitable creativity or like a big score if you even have like a creativity things like that um i keep referencing the big score uh because it does something very powerful to this deck so it's a four mana instant uh, you have to discard a, a card as an additional cost to cast it but you know if it resolves you get to draw two cards and create two treasure tokens uh two treasure tokens being the main thing obviously uh at four mana 
uh, you're not going to be able to do anything with creativity. Like, you'll be able to do something with creativity, but you're only going to get a Xenagos or a World Spine Worm. And just hitting World Spine Worm is pretty good, but if you just only hit a Xenagos, it's really not that great. So the fact that the big score makes two treasure tokens, and you get to do it on turn four. So then on turn five, you're going to play your fifth land, and you have a very good odds of doing it, since you just drew two cards with big score, plus your draw step, that you'll be able to... Uh, target both of the treasures that you make with the big score and then just kind of go from there um, additionally this allows you to like if you create like you know tokens with uh, secrets of the key um, things like that you know if you just have like other ways to like put tokens into play even like a fable the mirror breaker on like turn three whatever uh, you're actually able to use the treasure tokens that you make from big score to uh, interact like with spell pierce and stuff like that or even like make disappear um, for just, like, kind of this weird thing about Endowment of Creativity, which I could have stated, like, when we were talking about the card, but kind of relevant now. Uh, for this to work, you have to destroy those things. So, if you target, like, two treasure tokens, but then you use both treasure tokens to, like, stop your opponent from, like, countering in your Endowment of Creativity or so on, uh, you will be very sad because you will not then get to, you know flip cards until you exile that many so like creativity the stipulation is you have to be able to destroy them um so obviously if you have like an indestructible thing it also won't work so on so just something to keep in mind when playing the card in domino creativity is that if you target something and then you either you know sacrifice it or anything like that if it's not there when the creativity resolves you will not get to flip for that specific permanent um Lastly, there's a Dig Through Time as, like, the last of the uh, non, like, permanent spells. Uh, we, we all know Dig Through Time. Uh, Dig Through Time is, you know, like, the standard for, you know, card advantage alongside uh, cards like uh, Treasure Cruise. Uh, you get to look at the top seven cards of your library, put two of them in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Obviously, with, like, all, like, the cheap interaction stuff that you get to play with this deck and just getting to discard cards, like, to big score and whatnot. You are able to cast Dig Through Time pretty reliably for 2 mana, and the fact that it's so cheap, you can dig, find whatever you need like at the end of turn, leave up some interaction to be able to make sure that your Dig Through Time resolves, and then go to your next turn and then just go off with Indomitable Creativity. Um, the enchantments, you have Shark Typhoon, you have Fable the Mirror Breaker. I managed Shark Typhoon, like, it has the upside of like early on cycling to make a 2-2 two -two or a 3-3. Three -three. Uh, again, just giving you like another token in the deck to like hit with Indomitable Creativity. Uh, obviously, you can cycle it to make a big shark. You can also just play this as like a six man enchantment if you're really desperate. And like a lot of your other spells, just you know, make sharks. And even though like a one one or like a two two flying shark might not seem threatening, when you have a bunch of them in play, it is very hard for your opponent to deal with that many unless they're like blue eye control or something like that. Uh, and of course, we have four Fable the Mirror Breaker. This card, single-handedly on its own, can get you going for a, uh, a X2 Indomitable Creativity by making the Goblin Shaman, and then getting an attack and make like a treasure token and stuff. Uh, obviously, it is kind of a little bit harder to do it, but you know this definitely gets you going. And then obviously, getting to let you dig deeper, discarding land or discarding cards that you need, whether it be lands non-relevant spells in the matchup and then drawing two fresh cards on top of the card for your draw step you know very powerful card obviously sees four of play and like a lot of the decks in pioneer sees a good amount of play in modern and stuff this card is just amazing and obviously deserves a home in this deck uh where you're trying to do unfair things uh the mana base you have a hall of storm giants i'd imagine like a hall of like has ended some amount of games uh paying six mana it becomes a seven seven uh blue giant creature with ward three so you know even harder for like your opponent to like deal with it especially like once you kind of get it going you have two muta vaults uh again i'd imagine like this is a way that you can you know tap it make it a two two and then target it with indomitable creativity also again could just end the game you play a decent amount of like removal and permission you can probably keep the the way clear for muta vaults to get in there and end the game that way uh, Odawara, you know, we see this as like a one of in a lot of decks. It's just a good kind of like answer to everything. It doesn't use this, uh, it doesn't, 
uh, get got by like counter spells and things like that. So it's just kind of a free like get rid of like a a graph digger's cage or something like that. You know, at the end of turn and then untap and do your creativity thing. Uh, you have uh, two tokens in. Again, critically making two tokens uh, at four mana. So then when you pay, uh, play your fifth land, you're able to target both of them and uh, turn them into a Xenoghost and a World Spine Worm. Or the rest of the mana base, you, know, you have Spire Bluff Canal, Storm Carved Coast, Steam Vents, Shivan Reef, and River Glide Pathway. You know, lands that are just going to uh, fix your mana. Obviously, you're your blue red you know obviously like your only green cards are the two cards you're trying to cheat in the play so um a lot of like blue red lands and uh some of these like utility lands that can close out the game etc uh the sideboard like you have like rending volley getting to deal with uh deal four damage to target white or blue creatures uh, a lot of them probably being from you know like some of the phoenix decks uh like blue red spirits uh the fact that it hits white creatures also means like the mono white deck it gets hit pretty hard by this getting dealt four damage uh it's a removal spell that doesn't get uh kind of stonewalled uh relatively later in the game you know like rending volley like a creature could stick around for like a few turns um and rending volley still hit it while fiery impulse kind of has like diminishing returns along with like fire prophecy in a way as well uh you have like aether gust you know, mono green Devotion is still like a very popular deck, even though it seems like it's on the down tick. It's still a very good deck. Aether Gust is like a way to answer it. Also, getting uh, past some of those like inc on, uh, ways to make spells uncounterable because it technically doesn't counter the spell. Disdainful Stroke, because there are people that are just still trying to go over the top, and uh, Disdainful Stroke can definitely answer that, especially for like the mono green decks. Uh, Narset's Reversal is very interesting because uh, I believe that it can counter an indomitable creativity like in the mirrors and then you get to target your own things and just go off before your opponent gets to go off. Uh, you have negates just you know always a staple in like the sideboards. Uh, just counter non-creature spell for two mana. Very good, very powerful. Uh, obviously no drawback to it. Uh, Mystical Dispute uh, just definitely a way that you can fight back in like counter wars. It you know, paying three mana to make your opponent pay three mana for a spell is okay, but when your opponent gets to play something and you get to counter for one and then get to leave up like a make disappear or whatever, you know, to tax them further, uh, it ends up working pretty good in your favor. You have three more Shark Typhoon. I'm assuming that you when you want to be like a little bit more grindy, maybe you need more ways to like generate tokens and stuff. Shark Typhoon comes in. Holebreaker Horror. Uh... I mean, pretty amazing, because, like, you could just cast the spell. Like, it's one of the threats that you could creativity into that you could, like, cast. And then, uh, obviously, as you play spells, like, you get to bounce spells to your opponent's hand. Like, just essentially countering them for the most part. Or just, like, returning permanents to their hand and really mess with, like, their board. non land permanents. So you can kind of keep their board empty, and Hallbreaker is going to end the game very quickly. Uh, so, I mean, just a very good card. We knew this card was, like, very good, like, in standard. And, you know just about any other format where like a seven mana like flash creature is playable so definitely very powerful and a very good hit uh for the deck you know because uh, you see like in the modern versions of this deck like they give like uh emrakul and stuff that they get so this kind of gets to be like the emrakul for the uh creativity deck and whew, that ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would be, but that is the easy creativity deck. That's kind of breaking it down card by card, you know, everything that you need to know kind of to, you know, play deck and why everything kind of fits in its place. Um, again, it's a deck that does something unfair, and I think generally unfair decks are, you know, pretty good choices. Um, they just require you to be familiar with the deck. So definitely knowing a lot of lines of play and learning a lot of lines of play where you, you know, just hope you get lucky enough to not draw one of your two hits and then also playing in a way to where you are able to not get blown out by like maybe a removal spell on one of your treasure tokens or like even on like one of your creatures if you have to go off like a creature and, you know, again, just keeping those things in mind. Uh, there's going to be a guide to the modern creativity deck that i'm going to put up later just because i had been playing like tons and tons of matches with it and i think it's a deck that is definitely worth going over in depth how i do in like my other videos so if that's something that interests you uh and you may be like more into the pioneer 
version of creativity. I think there's a lot of good tips that you can learn from that video when it goes up. So I implore you to watch that. Um, that's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video. Of course, leave a comment if there's a another Pioneer deck that you want to see. Uh, maybe a deep dive on as well, because I'm going to be looking into some of the other Pioneer decks to play in like a deep dive and stuff like that. And of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. That's going to do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you all in the next video.